You sign the wrong scorecard. Guess what? Erasers exist. Yeah. Come you on. You sign the wrong scorecard. The uh, the PIF just gives you a million dollars. Four play presented by Barstool Sports. We got a segment show. We got closest to the pin is returning. Brought to our uh, brought to you by wow. our great friends at Fireball. I've got some good ones lined up. We got a big. St. Louis Blues hosting the New York Islanders game uh, Thursday night, tonight, as this podcast comes out. Oh, so we wow, might have something great. related to that. Uh, and then we got uh, several from the galleries brought to you by our great friends at Taylor Made Golf, the QI10, QI10 Max, and the um, QI10 LS, which is a low spin. Uh, so we're going to get into a bunch of those. Um, we got a new series that's out, Hater, in which case I just call out some haters out there who have been very mean to me online, play them <laughs> in a match, and film it. Uh, the first one is out. I think the reviews uh, were great. I don't know if we want to like spoil the result or not at this point. Maybe we could do like wait a couple minutes if you would uh, like or or cover your ears for a few minutes. Uh, but this is an idea we've had for like a year, I feel like. Uh, and we finally got the first one. We filmed this in like October. So it's been four or five months. We're going to try to film and get as many of them out there as we can. It's a little difficult at this point. I was going back and forth with Kyle Timms and, and Jonesy over the last day of combing through stuff and trying to figure out, you know, who would be the great candidate. You really need some fire and whatnot. Um, but yeah, new series idea. It's everywhere that you get videos right now and people can go watch it if they would like to or have not. My, that's my question was, how do you select the, how do you make sure the person is not like actually a, a very mean person who's going to be nasty on camera? You really just don't. And, you know, uh, shout out to my guy, Doug, because he was texting me all day yesterday, going through the comments and people were like, Oh, of course, Riggs picks like a 60 year old. And I was like, look, <laughs> I, you can't I don't we don't have a great way of vetting people you kind of look at their profile if they're private they got a picture that's like this big and you kind of are just like what's your handicap let's play a match you go back and forth a little bit make sure they're try to do your best but yeah I mean we ended up playing the match we got dinner at Lisey and hung out with like our crew and then he ended up sleeping in one of my guest bedrooms we had a couple of beers so he was a nice normal dude but he could have also just killed me in the middle of the night and been like I finally killed Riggs hell yeah like you just don't fucking know I want you to be safe, but I do hope when you do one of these, the guy's a fucking <laughs> asshole. It's got to go crazy. Yeah. Right. Right. Because I, well, I mean, what you're going to find and what people who aren't, whose lives aren't on the internet, what we find though is when you do say something to one of these people or you meet them or whatever, they do turn into normal, nice people. So it might be a while before you find one of these guys or the next one, the guy might just be a nightmare, which would be incredible content. Yes. No, I, in terms of the real asshole thing, Dan, I think that's the dream. Like you almost, yeah, you know, yeah. we were sort of talking about this beforehand, but you need almost no one's like that in real life. Like what kind of human being would be in real life like they are as an internet commenter if they showed up and were just like, fuck you, Riggs, and like we're just <laughs> yes. mean to everybody? That would be fucking nuts. That's dude. what I was kind of hoping for. And then this guy was like great, perfectly nice. It'd be a great video. And like on some level, I think we were kind of planning on drumming that up a little bit, but you know, you're sitting in a cart together. You like introduce and like, he's just a normal person with a family. I, I, you know, it's, it's a little bit tricky at that point. Uh, but I'm sure we're going to get some total lunatics. And, and if people play it up, like that's great, but you don't know anything until they show up. I don't know anything. I show up, shake the guy's hand. We're on the range together. It was just the two of us on the driving range. So it felt like we were in the final group of like a tournament where everybody kind of dwindles off the range. And then you're just kind of out there playing. And it's not like it's, it'd be one thing if it was like a, a crowd or something that you could kind of get lost in but like when there's just two people out on a golf course it's like quiet and you're just playing a ma it's and you don't know each other you're kind of just gonna be like hey so where are you from you know how oh you got a, <laughs> yeah. oh, you got a wife and kid that's cool what do you do for a living like it just turns yeah. into that a little how bit. long are you in town for Riggs? how long are you in town for <laughs> Dude, me and dan i we have a great content idea too me and dan where next time <laughs> i go to a media event uh where we are credentialed as media i'm gonna wear a hidden camera and we're going to do a ticker of like a bingo card of the go to phrases and questions that you get during the whole thing, which is always, where are you staying? Where are you, where staying? you guys staying? How long are you guys in town for? Oh, have you <laughs> been to the tournament before? And like, <laughs> oh, it's great. We just it's great fucking week. get it from, I don't know, 75 different people that you see that are just the normal faces. But anyways, it is kind of that conversation throughout the whole time. And then you're trying to also play a match or whatnot. So I don't know. We'll probably get some lunatics. I hope we get some lunatics. But I hope it doesn't go too far with the lunatics. It's, it's such a good idea. I, I love it. You I, you did tell you said it to us like a year ago. Like I want to do this. And listen, you've got no shortage of haters like we all do. And it's like 
Might as well play them. It's such a good idea, and I think people are really liking it. So I hope you do like a lot of these. Yeah, it's a it's a great series, and you definitely need the lunatics because there are lunatics out there. We all have them. I mean, I've got a guy who just responds to every single thing I put up, and he just writes woman hips. And at some point, <laughs> I would love to just meet that guy because I know if I met him in person, he'd like shake my hand and be like, "What's up?" That's the only problem with the series is like no matter how insane they are in person, they're always going to be somewhat more normal. Right, they're not going to continue that fucking fire. But now that the series is live, and now that people know what it is, if they're crazy enough and they want that like baggage on them, and they want to be labeled as a fucking psychopath on the internet, then sure, go all for it. You have a huge platform now. You're about to be on a on, on you know a four play video. Like, go do your thing. Go try and beat Riggs. It's a great series. Uh, but anyways, if people haven't watched it yet, go check it out. We're gonna try to film as many as we can. It is logistically just difficult. It's difficult to find people and comb through and whatever and get them out and set it up. But we're gonna try to film as many as we can now. And uh, and yeah, if people haven't watched that, go online, check it out, and we're gonna just try to keep cranking those as frequently as we can. Cars.com is a leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car. Look, you got to have a car. One of the most important things that you'll ever acquire. It's just a part of your family. It's who you are from safety to your style to your personality. You're going to put your kids in there, maybe your dog, maybe your cats, yourself. You're going to drive to work in it all the time. You're going to do road trips with it. You're going to do all kinds of stuff with it. You got to have the right car. They uh, put up to 50,000 cars added to cars.com daily. You can shop over uh, 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities. Cars.com, they've been doing it for 25 years, gentlemen. 25 years they've been doing it. Oh, it's incredible. And I just I talk a little bit about cars on this show. And um, you can just get swindled at these places, at these dealerships a lot of the time. And you just kind of get like, you just don't know what you're getting into. And Cars.com is very clean. It's very right to the point, And you know exactly where you're going to get. And you're not going to get, you're not going to get, uh, you know, bent over or whatever the saying may be mm. it's you know it's you're just gonna you know what you're getting when you're when you're browsing that website and there's nothing better there's really nothing better than seeing all the trims and the makes and the years and the models i love it me too and uh and a lot of people love cars.com that's why they just crush it that's why they're celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research find inventory finance and sell cars so find your next possibility on cars.com that is cars.com where to next Masters. Let's start with the Masters real quick. Uh, I think a pretty surprising news today from the Masters tournament. They extended three invites. This is sort of Dan's forte. The biggest one, Joaquin Neiman, uh, live tour guy, uh, who has just fallen in the world rankings despite being, you know, one of the better players in the world when he went to live. Uh, now he and a couple others, three total, invited to the Masters tournament. Yeah, I think, look, it's it's in the Masters' best interest to rise above the battle of the tours and be one of the tournament, be the only tournament, one of the four tournaments that where all the best players play against each other. So they invited Neiman. I don't think they invited him just because he won Live Mayakoba. It's more of a holistic thing. He was a great player on the PGA Tour. He finished 16th in the Masters last year. He won the Australian Open in December. He went over to Dubai and played in the uh, De Desert Classic, which is one of their Rolex series, one of their kind of signature events. He finished tied for fourth. So he's gone around the world. It's basically like he played a very, very hard non-conference schedule, and he, and he did very well in that non-conference schedule. And that combined with his status, you know, and I think help winning live health. But I don't think it's like, because Taylor Gooch had a similar situation last year where he was playing really well uh, but was tumbling down the world rankings because he was on live. He didn't get the special invites because I still don't think that playing well just on live is enough to get these majors' attention to where they're going to go be up beyond their rules and invite you. But I think because of the live stuff combined with everything else, they invited him. And I think he's like a nice guy that people like. You know, I think that's another one too where it's like he's not very controversial. He's not one of these guys who who went over and made a bunch of noise. He just kind of has played golf and said, I really want to play in these tournaments. And I think it's good for the Masters. I think these majors are, are they stand they stand alone more than ever. They're the Champions League. It's like, you can go play in your domestic tour week in, week out. We're going to find the best guys. And if the official World Golf rankings don't guarantee that we have all of the best guys, we're going to go in and just say, we want that guy to play in our tournament. So I think it's good for the Masters. I think it's good for the game. I don't, I don't really see any negative. It's the only tournaments that matter. It's the only ones where I know kind of what's going on. All these other events are so split. Like, 
uh, what this has really done, and I know I'm not the first one to make the point where it's like the majors are the only thing that matters. I, PJ dude, Tour this, live. I don't give a fuck. Dude, this week at Riviera was kind of depressing in that way. Like it, I, I you know, I don't know if it was the Tiger leaving or whatever. It just didn't have juice. And I, I was just, I was talking to my brother the other day. He was like a massive golf fan, and he's like, I just, I just found myself caring less. They don't have Brooks. They don't have Bryson. They don't have DJ. They don't have Rom. They don't have Cam Smith. I mean, that's that's so many characters to the point where now if if a guy like Jordan Spieth gets DQ'd for something silly, but if he gets DQ'd, if Tiger's out, there's j- and Justin Thomas missed the cut, there's just not that many guys. And because the PGA Tour is so deep, the guys who have won tournaments this year are not the star. It's not the guys who they need to sort of pick up the slack, right? Rory hasn't won. JT hasn't won. Spieth hasn't won. You've got Matthew Pavone. You've got, you know, Nick Taylor. You got Matsuyama, who's a great player, but doesn't connect with fans. It just there just hasn't been juice on the PGA Tour so far this year. Does Liv have the scorecard rule, like for Spieth? Oh, like if Rom I'm not signed sure. the wrong scorecard, would they just be like, get an eraser on that thing? He's still playing. I mean, it is the USGA rule, but yeah, I think they're so player centric that I I feel like they wouldn't do it. I agree. It would have been incredible if they came out with a statement at the same time, being like, "Look, if you signed an incorrect scorecard over here." We'll just correct it, and then you're just still yeah. in the tournament. Not right. a big be deal. The XFL, all- <laughs> go full XFL and be the opposite of everything the league that you are going up against is. You sign the wrong scorecard. Guess what? Erasers exist. Yeah. Come you on. You sign over. the wrong scorecard. The uh, the PIF just gives you a million dollars. Yeah, I saw. Uh, I think I saw the ratings even with Tiger. Uh, the first couple days were down like fifty, sixty, se- like seventy percent or something at the Genesis um year over year so clearly they're not high i think it was like under a million people watching which again i know we've had this conversation a million times people have roasted us online but just saying that in certain mediums and at certain time youtube golf is literally more relevant and bigger than the professional game and looking at that the genesis elevated event tiger woods the host coming out with the sunday red all that stuff even if the ratings were similar to what they've been the fact that there was just zero juice whatsoever i think is a product of what we've all feared for a long time that golf is just not exciting enough on a professional level to be divided at all and if it is you really just fucking lose interest and you can't afford right now to be losing the interest of the average sports fan any fan that's looking for entertainment because there are so many fucking options to be entertained now you've got a thousand different streaming services you can watch any game at any time of whatever your favorite sport is and then you look at golf and you can't even watch the best players play against each other except for four times a year. And even then, you know, one of them has to get a, a sponsors or a special invite for the Masters that becomes headline news. Like, oh, this guy that clearly should be in the Masters is in the Masters. Wow, that's nice that Augusta invited him. So the whole thing, I feel like, is headed down a pretty shitty path. And boy, you really wonder if golf just couldn't afford right now to be losing the interest that it's losing. And if golf is going to be able to regain the fan that they're losing right now bro that was what i was going to say where the longer this goes with the, you lose these people and a good chunk of them are not going to come back if it keeps going i would say we're already at the point where there's casual fans out there who are like i was sort of into golf but then it got confusing i didn't know who was playing where so now i'm just going to go watch the million other things that i can watch that is going to be what's going to hurt where even if they get back together the ratings are going to be like they're not that good because golf is not that interesting and it's not interesting enough for a long civil war to keep going there was a this happened with indycar uh in i think it was the 80s there was like a big split and it just like kind of killed the sport it never really bounced back we, we've talked about this in the past sports are not uh you're not locked in at, at the level of fan interest that you have at one point in time things can change the nfl has gotten way bigger uh major league baseball has has you know the the world series is not the same cultural event that it used to be um i and i think Mc, did you guys see Mackenzie hughes that that thing he did when, during the walk and talk he was doing a walk and talk at Riviera on Saturday. This is yeah, you guys were clearly locked into the action. Um, and he, oh yeah, it was electric. Uh, he talked, you know how could you not be? <laughs> but he basically said like, I think we've lost sort of the spirit of the game. Like I think all it is right now is it's all about the money. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. And for us, that's like kind of fun to talk about. It's kind of, it's fun to speculate. There's like petty shit that's going on. But the average guy at the club is just like these guys. All they care about is just making more money. And I, I don't think that that's a winning strategy at this point. I'm rooting for it all to fail. So YouTube golf has its own league and we all just get to take over. <laughs> We're the give new us, tour players. Give us all the sponsorships that they wanted to put into PJ tour or live or yeah. whatever. They split that talent. All of us. I mean, I don't, I don't want to speak for all the groups, but I did see that Garrett commented under the clip 
that we put up about being like, oh, we should, you know, there's clearly an audience here. And he was like, Garrett was like, I'm fired up about this. So if all of us can get together, we'll take all those sponsorships that are pissed off that the ratings are down for the PJ tour and live, I guess. Right. That's, you know, these guys are assuming that people just want to watch the best golfers of all time forever. You know, they want to just keep doing that, but maybe if they keep getting greedy and keep splitting off and trying to find the best product for themselves, there's going to be another product that finds its way into the hearts of the viewership. And that might be YouTube golf. Who knows? You never know the answer. Um, You don't also don't know what's going to happen with sports. Like there's such a, the amount of money that's going into these sports right now is almost like, it's not realistic to keep, to keep going like the, the you, you see um ryan Rosillo was on pmt and he was talking about uh mark cuban selling the mavs and he's like at some point that has to really start to you know flare up something where it's like is this a bubble is there is there right. is there something going on here with like tv rights and maybe ratings and and are people even caring about these sports as much as they used to if a guy like mark cuban's like i'm out of the nba with how much money they're making like what does that show you like where sports are going? I don't know how it correlated it is to golf, but like, I just, I just don't know how any of these leagues are going to be able to sustain with just like with the way they're going. Like you're saying, no one's actually paying attention from week to week. Like the, like no one really was dialed into Riviera. It's just a simple fact. And like, maybe the writing's on the wall. Oh, who I, was, knows? I was listening to a podcast the other day where like the NBA, for instance, the, the interest in the NBA seems to be at an all time high in terms of, social media and the conversation around it and the trades people are talking about it but the nba ratings are actually down so there's there's this new like form of fandom where you follow the gossip of a league but you don't actually watch the games I'm like you guy. just watch the playoffs so, like golf is a perfect example of that like you, we just watch the majors and when the nba playoffs start people watch that but in terms of watching regular season events whether it be golf riviera or nba games People are just like, I'm less interested in that. I want to know the drama around the league. Uh, that's me with the NBA. I mean, golf, I'm a, a sicko. I'm going to watch, you know, every single tournament that yeah. I can forever. But with the NBA, I, I I have a loose idea of what's going on. And, you know, I saw the Doc Rivers drama. I saw the JJ yeah. Redick stuff. Like, I see that online, but I'm not fucking watching TNT NBA Thursday. Like, no chance. It's unwatchable. I'll watch the playoffs, but you're right. It isn't. It's like a. I don't know. I guess they can monetize that, like more more followers, and they can. But it's hard. It's not as directly like forever. The 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 sort of uh, metric has been ratings, whereas now it, you're right. There is a different way to follow leagues. What the NBA did, this has been talked about at, at an insane length. But what the NBA did with that All Star game was honestly the craziest thing I've seen in professional sports in a long time. To have That's people was. fly there and make a weekend out of it and like really get into the sport and how much money that league makes and how much money those players make you could be a six man off the bench making like 30 million dollars a year you show up to the all-star game they were chucking half court threes they they actually on the mic said we don't give a fuck about this game well that's an indicator was it anthony edwards like, i don't think nobody cares about this game what are you talking about no but what that's are you a- talking you sold out indianapolis you sold out a fucking football stadium that's indicative of what you're saying, though. When the money gets this big, guys don't want to risk their bodies for an exhibition. So there are guys who are making $50 million a year, and they're like, I want to continue making $50 million a year, and if I tear my ACL on a crazy dunk in the All-Star game or going too hard, it's it's. I don't know what you do with it. I, I don't know what you do with any of it. As the money goes up, these guys are going to get more and more protective of their bodies and what they do with it. So I... Listen, I it was a disgrace. The whole thing was crazy, but I also don't blame them. It's like they're protecting their assets. Was yeah, it just like no like one the was assets, trying at all? Was that what it bro, was? Like no one tried. It was like an SNL skit. Like <laughs> so, it used to be when I would the NBA All Star Game used to be from what I can gain and when I would watch the th- the first three quarters was like let's see Anthony Davis throw lobs to like a guy who he doesn't normally play with, and that was really fun. And then the fourth quarter, it was like all right, let's batten down, play real defense, and make it a real game. It would appear now that it's all just like, don't get hurt, throw a few dunks, shoot from the logo, everybody just kind of hang out and score 250 points. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so insane. Yeah, it's, and nobody, you know, nobody does the dunk contest. I know Jalen Brown did it, but like, again, the money is so big that these guys don't want to hurt themselves. And can you blame them? That's their livelihood. Right. I know, but like their livelihood stems from everything that the All-Star Game weekend is. 
Like that is why their livelihood. I don't is know if that. that's true right? anymore. Nobody's watching. It one hundred percent is. But nobody's but, watching the game. You know the even. idea around like Fan a weekend interest. for the fans. Like a, a, an idea of like giving back to the people that make you fifty million dollars a year. It's just it's the idea around it. It's like if they don't give a fuck about that, why should the fans give a fuck about the next game that they're playing? And just because they're making a lot of like, it's just a fuck you to the actual league. And that's what I'm saying. Like at some point. Like maybe this whole thing is just a facade. It's just a fucking. It, it has no legs. Like the players don't even care about it. They don't care like, about the. It's like tragedy of the commons a little bit, which is something you learn about in school. Where it's like if there's a free thing, or if there's a, people are going to act in their own self interest, even if it's to the detriment of the entire group. Right. And I think that's what's happening in golf and in these other sports. Where, like Trent said, it's in the players' best interest to not tear his fucking ACL in the All Star game. Like right. That I is, get that. There's no on an individual level. So you're, you're, you're banking on people to act for the collective good and sacrifice a little bit of their own earning potential. It's a, it's a really tricky situation. I don't know what the solution is. I just don't know why the, the, the mental side of it has turned into like trying for the all-star, like trying during the all-star game and getting hurt is actually like a big waste of your career. When like, why is like trying to get ready for the season and like tearing your ACL any different? Like it's, you're, 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 you're trying to like make, your fans love you more and like grow your personal brand. Like, isn't that worth everything? Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. I think that you could argue, you know, for the 33rd game of the season, if you tear your ACL trying to beat some team versus I get that technically that game counts and the all-star game doesn't, but does the all-star game really not count if the most eyeballs are on it and you go up there and you have a sick performance, and the fans are going nuts for you, and then when your contract is up in a year or two years, and the next GM remembers that, does he remember that more than if you had 21 points in that 33rd game of the season or not? So I think that you could kind of argue it either way. I don't know that like risking it in one situation is necessarily better than another situation, even though people would argue that a regular season game actually matters and an all-star game doesn't. I think in today's entertainment world, the all-star game performance might matter more. I guess you would say if you did, like, let's say that you are tearing your ACL in one of these games, unfortunately. If you do it in the All-Star game, you look like an asshole. You're like, oh, I just, you know, there there goes Ant Edwards. He tore his ACL trying to all in the, all- in the All-Star game when nobody is doing that. That's because we've deemed it to be you're an asshole if you try in the All-Star game, I guess. Like, that thinking... Yeah, is why they don't care. But it should yes. be the opposite. It should be like tear your ACL in the All Star game. You got every. It's, it's on national television. You got people flying in from all over the world. It's a huge weekend for the city. You got three week at three days worth of events. Try in that thing, like try. But we've we've deemed it like a loser event, so they're not going to try and play in it. Right. But it, and I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's very it's it's interesting when all this money comes into play. It just it completely changes the way of thinking. But then you have guys like Max Homa that play in the four man scramble and are like taking crazy lies coming out of a bunker and like completely risking his entire career, essentially, and that his whole year to play in a four play video, probably because part of him knows that like, hey, if he tries really hard in that thing, it also increases his brand awareness and his likability. And like if he actually beats us, it like means something on social media and it adds to it all. So I don't know. There's two ways of thinking about it, I guess. But the money aspect is just getting out of control. It is out of control, and I'll, I'll compare it to soccer because Kylian Mbappe, who I think you guys know who that is, he's yeah. a French mm-hmm. striker. He's like why I almost ruined my moving. soul when I was just on on Messi <laughs> yes. in the World Cup. Oh yes. my god, he, what a, uh, that so guy's he's, a problem. He's, Mbappe yeah, he's is incredible. A problem. So he's he's regard he's um widely rumored expected to go from PSG to Real Madrid. Real Madrid is like the biggest club in the world. He's soccer is by far the biggest sport. He's going to get paid fifteen million euros a year. Fifteen one five. That's like a six man in the NBA. So right. something something's not adding up with how much money these guys are making. That's yeah, the most right. popular sport in the world, and that's one of the three best players in the entire world. And he's 25 but aren't years they, old. I'm a little confused by that because aren't they getting offered $750 million a year by like Saudi Arabia? Yes, but that's obviously not tied to reality. I'm saying these, these clubs where it's like the biggest clubs in the world where they're like the best clubs, and the, these clubs are actually... There's financial fair play in European soccer that doesn't exist in Saudi. They have to, you know, they have to balance their books. There has to, they can't just spend whatever they want to spend. And they've deemed that 15 million euros a year plus a signing bonus, but 15 million euros being his salary, that's what they feel like is fair that's market fucking, value for. Him. If that's true, that's insanity. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, you guys should be making 150 maybe, million maybe, dollars a year. Maybe it's just getting out of control for these owners. <laughs> like, 
Well, I, I, I had this conversation with my buddy where he like everyone just has like regular jobs and they get like their little you know increases each year. And I'm not a big inflation guy. I don't really know the the way inflation works, but it just seems like the world is getting out of control where things are doubling and tripling. House prices oh. that used to be four hundred thousand are now eight hundred thousand because of COVID. And like like the the amount that people are making aren't adding up to it. So like maybe sports is getting to a point where they're like it's just they're making too much. And I know that this is a very common argument by the common man where it's like <laughs> they're making too much money. Like, why is a guy need to play baseball, make 50 million? It's always been the, the answer to that's always been like, well, the business makes money. That's why the owner's giving out those salaries. They right. make a profit. But maybe at some point it's just going to tip over. And it's not going to make any sense. Like the people that are paying for these leagues, the fans might not be able to just keep up with it. Right. You're like- paying Mbappe $30 million. The ticket has to be four hundred dollars instead of two hundred. You know what I mean? That's what I was thinking. Like, if you're paying LeBron and AD fifty million, at a certain point, the owner has to pay for those salaries. And if people can't afford to go to the games, then does all that money dry up? Like that feels like the bubble where all these players are making so much in every league, and the owners have to pay them. And if people aren't coming in buying popcorn, buying hot dogs, they're just like, I got to stay home and watch it on TV because I can't afford a ticket price. Then they're gone. Well, it also then just goes back to TV rights, right? And like the TV rights are massive. And in order for a lot of these channels to justify being in existence today, they have to have the rights to these leagues because otherwise their original programming, as we've seen with ESPN, with all kinds of different, their original programming has simply not kept up with the internet, with Barstool with all kinds of YouTubers, with Rogan, with everybody. Their original programming just hasn't kept up. And so in order for all of them to justify literally being in existence, they have to have the rights to live sports. So they pay billions of dollars for those rights. And then, I mean, golf's a good example. When we bitch quite frequently about commercial after commercial after commercial after commercial, well, now they have to justify and try to break even or make money on these massive amounts of money they paid for the TV rights. So they just hammer you with commercials. And I get why the viewership and the ratings are down because the product just isn't as good as the storylines because of all those reasons. They're they're overloaded with commercials. They're trying to make it just like entertainment instead of focusing on the actual game and and, and showing, in our instance, golf shots. And when they do that, it becomes shittier for the viewer. And I think that Frankie's right. Like at some point in golf, in other leagues, not football clearly, but in other leagues, like it feels like it has to just cave because they're treating it like the nba owners now it feels like are treating it like startups where they're trying to pump it and then dump it they're trying to you know they're starting to sell these franchises starting to get valued at billions and billions of dollars and they're like well yeah if i pay all these guys 20 30 40 million dollars and you know we're maybe we're not making profit but at the end of the day i could always sell this asset now that i bought for a few hundred million or whatever it might be for three billion dollars you're like well i'm sitting on that so it is. It, it feels a little bit, the NBA feels a little bit like golf, where it's kind of a house of cards and it doesn't fucking make sense to the average person. But there's also really smart, really successful billionaires that own these teams that are clearly, it's working out for them. So The weekend ratings just came out for Genesis. It was down 5% from 2023, which sounds like not that bad. But think about all the shit that they've done to try and pump it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it and it goes uh, down. And I, Tiger was there last year, and he wasn't there this year. But th- okay, that's that's Bill. That's part of that's part of the future of golf. Is Tiger not? What, you're not right. being able to depend not on him have being him. there. He's not gonna be there forever. So they pump up the purse. They they make it seventy players. They do this whole signature event. It's in Los Angeles, and the ratings go down. Well, Ryan Rosillo on PMT did say that like when you see the ratings go down, you have to compare it to the other things, the other ratings, because like just saying the ratings are down actually means nothing unless you're comparing it to the things that it's going up against. If all the ratings are down, then like that's just what you're comparing it to. Yeah, that's just like the way that's the world a good is point. going. So like that's a good point. If something on Saturday was down five percent. Like what was the thing that it was going up against? How was that up or down? So if it's keeping up with the times, and that's like one thing. If it's getting completely dominated by another, like if another event, then that's that's a whole nother conversation. But but, but yeah, but I like don't know how keeping we... up is not enough when they're tripling the money. It needs, right. It needs that's what I'm grow. saying. I don't know where you go from here. And, and I don't know how we got into this. I, I like that you brought it back to golf because I was we were we were going so far away. We're talking about Mbappe, NBA. But it's just I'm, I was going to start talking about inflation. I was going to start talking about car prices. Like at some point, it's just getting Mbappe out does of control. This is this him when he scores? Yeah, that's scores? a celebration. Dan? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, like yeah. I, I was Super talking to a buddy. I was just talking to a buddy and he, <laughs> he got he got a car, right? He got a car. He got a car four months ago. 
And then he went, and then his wife went to the dealership and tried to get the same exact car with like the third row seating, the fucking sunroof. They said, we're not going to give you a third row seating. We're not going to give you a sunroof. And it's going to be like a basic model. It's going to be $150 more than what he was paying. And that's just the going rate for that car. So it's like, at what point does it stop? Like, like where does it keep going? Right? Like he's saying like, well, each year, like I only get a 5% increase in raise. But like, if you're raising car prices, 10, 20%, like I can't keep up with it. It's getting out of control. It's so, I just don't know how this all happens. Like if golf all of a sudden becomes guys are making $60 million a year, like what is a, what is a ticket to a golf event going to cost? And what is the, what is the sponsorship to that golf event going to cost for the, for the companies? It's just like, it's going to become, what happens if money just becomes too expensive? Is, is this how a recession happens? What is a recession? You know, is that what this is? Are these, are we talking about that? I don't know. I think we're over our skis. I think we're over our skis. Biden's America here. We're just, this is Biden's America. (laughs) And just get, make sure you get to the polls. And And it's an election year. Should be be, four years ago. Should be, should be a fun year for the election year. Fuck, man. We really really spun off topic here. Oh, boy. Yeah. uh, Yeah. The world might just end and we don't have to worry about any of this shit. So. Oh, but yeah, these are not things I, I necessarily need to know the answers to. I'm just always so curious. It's like, we just kind of like as in my, at least my generation, we just like brush it off. We're not like at the point yet where we start to really get angry and like charge the capital. But like we're just <laughs> like I just kind well, of kind of did. So, I, you know, I've said, right, I right. I guess it was my generation. But like you just I just like act like it's just, you know, that's just the world problems. I don't know. You know, people can't really afford their car payments and like things are getting out of control. Golfers are making 100 million dollars. You're just like, all right, I guess you just keep moving on with your life. At some point, you got to be like, what is going on around here? Well, I, that's it's honestly a different, it's a change in the times because back in the day when there was really nothing to pay attention to and there was no entertainment, like there was no electricity, you just sat there, read the newspaper, which pretty much talked about politics all the time and about right, all right, these right, things, right. and that's all you right. cared about. And now people are like, Psh, I'm not, the, the news channels don't even cover the news or politics. No, it's just it's all over. entertainment and who slipped going down the stairs and it's just oh. complete crap at this well, point. Well, so, important, here's the important news. I got a Nintendo Switch and I've been wow. playing that thing and I love it. I've been playing Animal Crossing. If you ever just need to take a break from everything that we're talking about, just get a Nintendo Switch if you can afford it. I think they're $4,000 now. Um, and then just play Animal Crossing yeah. and just focus on that and you don't have to worry about anything else. It's great. I got to get a, a Nintendo it's a great, Switch. It's a great hobby. You definitely, like, you get hot with it, and then you just, like, forget it, it exists. Oh, for great. sure. I do that with everything. I think Alex Bush told me that, and I was like, I'm going strong. And then, like, man, it's just you end up just going back to your old fling where it's, like, you just the Xbox and the NHL and PGA Tour 2K23 is just there. And the Switch is great, and you play Mario Kart and all these things, and you're like, man, there's just better games out there, you know? Like, well, that's I the thing. Like I'm not really more. into other video games anymore. I'm, I've, like, gotten to the point where... I, if I'm not playing the Switch, I would just be like watching TV. So that fills that void. Bro, I play so much EA and NHL 24 that because yeah. we haven't been traveling that much. It's actually so they have this thing called the EASHL where you make your own jerseys. You have a you have a, a an arena and you have a team. And we, me and my buddy Andrew, we play three on three with uh, a computer goalie and a computer D man. And I'm the center. He's the winger. And you only play your one position. It's three on three. And you play yeah. against other teams that have their team names, their logos, and their standings. There's rankings. Then every once every month, they have like the EASHL Cup where you basically play against a series against a team and you keep moving forward and you have to try and get to the cup finals. They keep your stats. I have like 1,400 goals. And like the announcers keep up with your stats. So like Frankie... My guy's name is Alexei Yashin. Like Alexei Yashin is like uh, like on the leaderboard for how many points he has. It's the best. Like I actually shake when I can't play. It. You know what I mean? Like I'm like I need to just like go score some goals and that's like a, play. That's that's gonna be our YouTube golf league. That's the format right there. That's what I mean. You know, Your that's name's it. Not bronzy. I'm surprised it's not bronzy. I'm gonna change it to bronzy. You know, well, I I didn't want like so many people. At first, it was someone uh, else like, gave you that nickname. You didn't come up with that. That was comment. Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, it was a um, – our jerseys look like the Islanders fisherman jerseys, but it has the Borelli's guy on the, the – oh, like, nice. literally the Borelli's that guy. Is. And my name was Frankie Frankie Borelli, and everyone's like, is this Frankie Borelli from Barcelona? <laughs> like every time I played a team. So I changed <laughs> it to Alexi Ashen, and it's just like now no one really knows. Yeah, I couldn't take it anymore. It was like every game was yeah. someone like, is this Frankie? Where's Dave at? And I was just like, I, <laughs> I can't – I can't play. And people were like, sending me videos of like them beating me on Twitter. I was like getting DMs oh, yeah, like, no, was can't. this you? 
You're I like, che- dude, this is your version was, of checking into a hotel under a fake name. That's what this is. There, yeah. <laughs> there was a, uh, there was a period in like 2017 when everybody was playing call of duty and big cat invited me into this group and we would play every night. And it was big cat, me, it was bill Haas, the golfers like cousin. And then it was, <laughs> and then it was Julian Edelman and we, and we would, he was like injured at the time or whatever. And he would play, and after every game, he would get a million messages like, if this jewel and ever, he'd be like, why the fuck do people keep saying that? And his name he had created in college was like J underscore Edels, like 11. (laughs) (laughs) And he would freak out. We'd be like, dude, you got to change your name. And he would always be like, I have so many stars and like emblems on my (laughs) shoulders from player that I'm never going to change. But he would get it after every fucking game. Um, He was a really good player. I miss Call of Duty. I probably need to get back into Call of oh, Duty. But, dude, you um, would fucking live for this NHL thing. It's like you play real hockey. It's like guys got to be in position and the poke checks and the stick lifts, face off wins. There's practice. There's a practice. Pl- we, we enter the practice <laughs> rink and we like, we, we hit each other with breakouts fucking- and stuff. Oh, breakouts. You wouldn't believe it. We got to find <laughs> um, a defenseman, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> Is it on Xbox? You guys play on Xbox? It's on Xbox, yeah. But like, you can't like go like back in series. Like, so it has to be like the Xbox Series X, uh, uh, S or whatever X. I'm surprised that fucking nerd Alex Bush doesn't play that shit. But he probably plays weird fucking. He's wizard probably games. over there jerking off to this conversation. Probably plays right like now. weird wizard games. Nah, or something I play Call like of Duty, but I, I play Challenge every now and then. He plays like uh, The Sims, but he's Taylor Swift. So <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's like the driver uh, for taylor Swift. he doesn't want to ever be taylor Swift. he just wants to be in her just the bodyguard so he just like he just drives her and drops her off at her sims house and like waits outside and, and, that and is, logs that's logs some dark hours of- there's some darkness there <laughs> he's like uh he's a chef inside uh, in one quarter of her fucking mansion right, right. Oh. Maybe once in a while in his Sims um, game, Taylor Swift enters the kitchen and asks, like, what's for breakfast this morning? And that's, like, <laughs> the biggest moment Dude, of his gaming when, life. <laughs> when we were in Scottsdale, I asked him, I was like, what would you do if Taylor Swift uh, came into the Barcelona office? And he looks at me and he goes, I dream about it all the time. <laughs> and then and then the next day he goes, Dude, I had that dream last night. She came into the Barstool office and I, like, freaked out. Oh, my God. She's just fucking massive, man. It's fucking She's crazy. huge. She's fucking huge. Uh, all right. We're going to fire up at a, uh, a little segment action. We're going to do closest to the pin. It's been a long time. Long time. It's long overdue. We're going to get this thing cooking again. We're going to get the graphic out on social. People can put their own scores in there, their own uh, guesses in there. I guess you would say whoever wins. We're going to send them a nice little uh, prize. Closest to the pin is brought to you by our great friends at Fireball Whiskey. When you find yourself stressing out over golf like we are, Fireball Whiskey is there to help. The Fireball 50 milliliter shooters, they're the perfect shot for the golf course. If you're really feeling like upping the ante on the course this weekend, make sure to grab the new Fireball Birdie Shot Club. It's literally a golf club, literally, filled with Fireball nips. And we've all been there before. You're having, whether it, you could be having a good time, bad time, you could be having any kind of time when somebody says, hey, how about we rip a shot of Fireball? It just gets everybody going. You get the juice going. The vibes are high. It's as good as it gets. So we love Fireball Whiskey. Fireball Whiskey loves closest to the pin. And we're about to go into it right now. I've got four good questions for you guys. I'm going to begin with someone we've talked about already today, um, Mr. Tiger Woods. This closest to the pin. And remember, we got to send the answers in invisible ink. It's a little bit of a tricky question, but I think you guys will get it. What hole will Tiger Woods' next last hole of an official tournament be? What I mean by that is if he plays in Bay Hill and he misses the cut, his next hole. Last hole of the tournament would be the 36th hole of the 2024 Bay Hill Invitational. If he plays the Masters tournament and he withdraws halfway through the second round, his next last hole would be the 27th hole of the 2024 Masters tournament. If he goes and has another knee surgery and doesn't play until next Genesis and then makes the cut and plays all 72 holes, your answer would be the 2025 72nd hole of the Genesis Invitational. So your guess, what will be the next last hole of an official Tiger Woods PGA Tour start? It's a good question. It's a little bit tricky to phrase it. My answer's in. My head's still spinning a little bit. Yeah, sorry. No, it's okay. It's it's me. It's my brain. Um, how do I do the... I totally forgot how to do invisible ink. You, you hold, hold the, the send. Hold the, arrow. hold the send wow. button, and then it gives you options. Everybody in? Bushman, are you in? Yes. Yeah, yep, I'm in. All right, Bush, read them off. Wow, we got similar answers. <clears throat> we have... Every single answer is one tournament. 
Dan Rappaport, 36th hole of the Players' Championship. Wow. Riggs Barstool, 36th hole of the Players' Championship. Trent Ryan, 36th hole of the Players' Championship. <laughs> Frankie and myself, 72nd Fuck hole you. of the Players. All right. Yeah. So, so we all have the same okay. tournament. We just think he's going to miss well, the cut. We all think he's playing the Players. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You better play the Players. You think he's going to miss the cut. You guys think he's going to make the cut, but not withdraw. I don't know why he's play the player like uh, he, he's only playing the biggest events i don't really understand why it's not like he needs the fucking fedex points just play honda you're at home it's against not as good of players get yourself some reps for the masters like i don't understand why he's doing just the i mean i do understand he still isn't in that mindset but it's you're not setting yourself up for success when you play once a month on the hardest courses against the best players but he's probably what, it's more of just like he wants the reps with with the heart beating, like I feel like the Honda probably doesn't get him going. Uh, I think I, it would still get him going. No, you think so? There's something different about just playing at a at, at a, in a tournament like the players, right? It's it's a it's a perfect tune up. It's a perfect precursor I, for the Masters. I agree. I he got he's got to play the players. If you're going to be this guy that's touting the PGA Tour and the history, I think as much as we like to shit on the tour for trying to make the Players Championship the fifth major. No offense to John Deere Classic. Maybe it's the fifth and a half major, but it really is the closest thing to a major tournament outside of the majors. I mean, it, 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 you know, if someone's got four PGA Tour wins, including a player's, like you usually note that and say that, I do think it gets the juices going being there. And we're wearing the hats right now. This is a great way for us to actually tease that on Friday we are releasing our players' championship gear tomorrow, um, which is tomorrow when you're listening to this. We got all kinds of cool stuff on here. I think there's a logo right here. Oh, nope. nope, the other side. <laughs> There's a logo. Nope, right here. Yeah, there, yeah, it right there, 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 there it is. There it is. There it is. So uh, we've collaborated with Players Championship. When I was at the Players Championship last year for the first time, I, I said to Dan, I said, dude, this is the closest thing I've seen to the Masters tournament. The way that it's run, the way that the course is set up, how iconic it is that they play at the same course and you know the holes and how famous they are. The crowds are like respectful. Um, you know, you've, you, it's just, it's fantastic. And so I kind of, I'm with Frankie. I just think that like, he needs to get the juices going. I think the players championship gets it going. We saw the rust on Thursday before the whole in and out incident occurred, but like his, his swing is there. He's hitting fucking fairways. He's still Tiger Woods. I thought he was rolling the rock pretty nicely. He's got to get the reps in. He just has to feel we've all been there, dude. You go home, you play with your buddies and you can play pretty well. And then playing on camera in a big match or under the lights or whatever it might be. is just fucking different. He's got to get the reps in. And I don't know the fucking Han slash cognizant classic now is just not, I, I'm with you. I don't think it's really going to get him going the way that he needs to get going because all he fucking cares about is winning majors at this point. And if he's not playing in anything that even comes close to simulating playing in a major. He, uh, he's got no shot. You don't think he cares about winning 83 PGA Tour events? I think he does, but I, I think he does, but I think he cares a lot more about, I think in his brain, he thinks he's going to win another major, and that will right. check that, both those boxes. That would be sweet. How about, how, how about Honda getting banged for their buck where they're not even paying anything anymore? Yeah. And I'm just calling yeah. it the Honda. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> I know. My poor boys, too. The Blake brothers who were like the agency that got cognizant, the new yeah. title sponsor of the Honda. And they're just, we're not calling it the Cognizant yet. So I'm going to, I want them to know I'm trying to do them a solid call it the Cognizant Classic. Um, okay. We all pretty much have the same answer, except we think Tiger's going to miss the cut and you guys think he's going to make the cut. Mm -hmm. uh, next one. How many goals will the St. Louis Blues score hosting the New York Islanders Thursday night, which is tonight? Uh, the Blues, a little bit of history. The Blues last five games, they scored uh, two goals, two goals, six goals, four goals, and seven goals, which doesn't really help. The New York <laughs> Islanders last five games surrendered four goals, six goals, two goals, five goals, and two goals again. All right, I'm in. As the resident hockey expert, I'm in. So, Frank, your tweet I'd be cracking up yesterday. This can't happen again. Quote tweet: It happened. They, they won though, two right? leads again. They won, but it was three one, four two, blink of an eye, four four. Couldn't couldn't be possible. The stats on the New York Islanders this year is something that has never been has never been done. That minutes They're that fifth. minutes led was interesting. They've Very. led the game the fifth most time. I don't know how to say it really, right? You're like, saying it right. That's right. It. The fifth most time in the league, but they're 18th in points. How is there a 13 point drop off? You know what I mean? Like that is stunning. Does that just mean that they're not giving up that many goals? It means that they're blowing leads at the very end. 
the very end, like like a lot, because they're half they're they're less they're on the they're on the bottom half of the league in terms of points, but they're at the top of the league in terms of leading the game. Right. Yeah. That's frustrating. That's yeah. That's what I've been saying all year. It's a frustrating fucking season, man. Because everyone says the Islanders suck. They're mid, as fucking Alex Bush would call it. But they actually, <laughs> they actually, <laughs> actually, they're they're a good team. They're scoring outrageously amount of goals. All right, are we all in here? Yep. Yeah. Bushman, read them. Similar minds here. Trent Ryan, three. Dan, five. Frankie, three. Riggs, five. Alex, three. We're all synced up today. Yeah. Simpatico. Yeah. Wow. I hope they only give up three. Fuck. I'm just going to read this off real quick just to end my Islanders tirade. 54 games sure. played. 18 blown third period leads. What That's percentage of the season is that? That's one third. That's exactly what 21. So out of 54 games, they've played 21 overtime games. They've lost 14 of them. <laughs> it's just, you know, six overtime wins, only one shootout win, 14 overtime and shootout losses. That's just a, yeah. those overtimes are, are coin flips. Apparently not. <laughs> Dude, they'll not also, they'll show, a, they'll show graphics of really good teams. And when they're leading in the third period, it'll be like this team is thirty-one zero and zero when leading in the third yes. period this year. And the Islanders yep. have blown have blown eighteen. Damn, dude, that seems like a lot. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's too many. And it's it's eight two goal leads in the third period under oh. ten minutes. That's sixteen. Let's say you lose those games. That's sixteen points. That's like the difference between that's... being second in the division and and out of the playoffs. So yeah, frustrating, <clears throat> frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. All right, what do we got Third next, question. Riggs? How many tweets will Dave Portnoy post in a 48-hour period from Saturday all the way through the end of Sunday this weekend that are about or include Miss Peaches? We're saying tweets? Or social media tweets. posts. Hi, Miss Peaches. Are we Not saying... total social media posts because I think that's just a little bit hard to track with everything, with every little thing. So I'm going to do just tweets. Wow. Saturday. So what were the dates again? All day Saturday, all day Sunday. The dog has two hundred and fifty thousand Instagram followers already. <laughs> I know. I yeah, I remember when uh Joe Rogan got his dog, Marshall, and that thing had like six hundred thousand followers in like a week. That's the same thing with Miss Peaches. Like that that dog is that dog has already doubled my Instagram account followers. It's it's tough. It's, 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 it's cute ass dog, very, man. It's a very cute dog. Very cute dog. And I we it's I've talked about this a lot this weekend. Just, you know, Hannah loves Miss Peaches and lo- and lives for every single Dave post. I think I might be too close to the sun with I can't his voice sometimes like I just like that's our boss so, like hearing your boss talk to a dog is like a little bit different than like you know what I mean it's just a little bit different than just watching him on I could see why it's the cutest and most amazing thing yeah on social media but like for me it's like man that guy usually like yells at us when we don't get a, <laughs> like an email off it's oh, yeah. like he's doing like dog talk which is totally normal i talked to him I, I call we have a we have a little white dog at my parents as i call him poodle he's not even a poodle i'm like poodle and uh oh, yeah, yeah I, got a just, do- I got a dog voice for sure of 100 percent, but it's just a little Everybody bit different it's a little it. jarring she listens to it jarring. in bed it's like and i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> that's a nightmare you can't have that <laughs> you can't have it I kind of wake up to it now too, because she'll just whatever she missed the night before, she'll watch at like seven a.m. and it's like, yeah, man, Miss Peaches was playing with a peach toy today. I was like, this oh, is so unbelievable. So cute. <laughs> got a peach bandana on. Shout out to Miss Peaches. All right, what do we got for numbers? Danny Rapstar four, Riggs five, Trent four, Alex nine, Frankie six. Ooh. The tweets is an interesting wrinkle because he's obviously going to post a lot on Instagram. Uh, well, do Miss Peaches her account, her account doesn't count, right? If you were to do that, because he posts a lot on Instagram there. But in terms of Twitter, it might just be. Do replies count? He might no, but he might. He doesn't really reply. He makes he makes a he makes a big push with this new shirt that's on sale for the. Uh, <clears throat> that counts. The, um, adopt on shop. Right? Yeah, that, that definitely counts. The adopt. Yep. I don't know his weekend plans either. But if he's just at home with nothing really going on, I was thinking thirty. He, yeah, he's just <laughs> yeah. gonna fire off Miss Peaches all weekend long, or. He could be doing any of that. I don't know. So, uh, all, all right. right. And then last one, pretty basic. Uh, winning score in Mexico this week on the PGA Tour. Last year's winning score was uh, 24 under par from Tony Finau. 
the year before was 17 under par from John Rahm. I have no information on course conditions, if it's supposed to be harder or windier. I have absolutely zero clue. That's how plugged in we are this week. Uh, so make your guesses. What? You forgot Invisible Ink, Trent? Ah! <laughs> Mobby. I almost did the same thing. Mobby. Mobby. You got him, Bushman? Oh, yep. Frankie Borelli, minus, or, uh, 21 under. Trent, 18 under. Riggs, 22 under. Myself, 22 under. Danny Rapport, 22 under with <laughs> wow. Thomas Dietrich bonus pick for the fellas. Jesus. Yeah, Thomas Dietrich's going to win this week. That's just a bonus wow. pick for everybody. Hashtag Ooh. DK partner. Mm. Yeah, hashtag I'm DK a, partner. I'm a DK partner. Hashtag DK partner that one. That's nice. Yeah. Thomas Dietrich for everybody. Thank me later. All right. DK partner. Hashtag DK partner. Yep. All right. All the guesses are in. A lot of similar guesses this week. Uh, so we'll kind of see how we do. Again, big thanks to our friends at Fireball Whiskey, sponsoring the old closest to the pin segment uh another thing i want to talk about is the uh the influencers the q as they're calling it to get into the myrtle beach event uh our own dan rapaport will be playing in this event got people riled up which is predictable the uh the classic like oh you're stealing a spot from a professional who should have that spot crowd which i love i love when they bitch guess what if that professional truly deserved that spot they would fucking have that spot so if you don't have it my answer would just be play better there's clearly a little bit of a wrinkle in the world of golf, which we've discussed a lot on here of it's an entertainment product. Uh, YouTube golf's getting huge. So I think it's out of 16 players in the field. Um, eight of them are kind of YouTube stars. I think eight of them are sort of aspiring professional uh, golfers. Um, again, our very own Dan Rapport, Fat Perez is playing. Grant and Micah are playing. Uh, I know I'm missing some. Quan. But, oh, yeah. Luke Quan's playing. Uh I think, what, is Wesley and George Bryan both playing? Just George, I think. Just George Bryan's playing. So yeah. uh, quite the field. And there's one spot out of 16 folks. Whoever shoots the lowest score will play in a PGA Tour event. I know our very own Dan. I think you guys are uh, shooting this on March 4th, but there's going to be an embargo uh, for five or six weeks until closer to the tournament. And then they're going to kind of put a whole video out, clearly trying to capitalize on the engagement, the audience, the views, the whole deal to drum up interest in the uh, Myrtle Beach PJ Tour event that's going on this year. Great idea. Uh, big fan of it. I know Dan's playing. You've been grinding on your game. How are you feeling about it? There, I'm, I'm, pra- I'm like practicing, practicing for the first time since I was in high school. So it's it's Ooh. fun. And and I'm going out after today to go hit balls and chip and putt. And, and I've got really nothing on the schedule next week before flying um, to Myrtle. So I'm, I'm giving it my all. I don't expect I'm not going to win. I'm, you know, these guys, a lot of these guys are professional ah, golfers do win. this for do this There's for a, a living party but that thinks you're gonna win there's a part the, of you that thinks you're gonna well win. i mean let's all you know solo second of the desert open you yeah. know does do certain things for a man's confidence so mm-hmm. i'm excited I mean, if I you can just be beat the fun. other influencers that's a huge win yeah that's that's kind of where i'm at where like i'm i'm not concerned with the one spot i'm just like go out there shoot something under par hopefully and and see where we finish kind of like desert open maybe it'll be solo second mm, i love maybe it. it'll be first it's gonna be great yeah, I love it. I think it's a no-brainer idea. Uh, the YouTube golf scene is, is 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 so big now. So many different personalities gaining a ton of a ton of views on everything that they post. So uh, to lean into that, and you know, it'd be one thing if it was if it was like fucking you know me, Trent, Robbie Berger out there like trying for this spot, and those were the only people that had a chance. And one, I I would understand that. Be kind but of the electric. guys are out there are very good players. Like even the guy, you know. Juan that corn fairy tour status uh at one point Dan I know like um George made a cut uh, in last made a cut September. on a PGA tour yeah. event. Grant is like a plus four handicap who when we filmed with him was like 3300 par over his last five rounds so there's really good players out there and uh to lean into the whole thing again I just think it's a it's a good idea so someone's um, gonna shoot six under like it's not gonna be like 82 gets you into a PGA tour event you know what I mean? right no. That's, yeah. yeah, right. You got to play really good golf. You got to play really good golf uh, to get in. So good luck to Dan Rappaport. People can follow along with that as we roll that out in, I guess, April is when that thing will be uh, rolling out. Um, all right. From the gallery, we're going to hammer a few from the galleries, uh, which is brought to you by TaylorMade Golf. Uh, we love TaylorMade. We've loved TaylorMade for years. The amount that they've gone to get us great guests, the best equipment in the world, the amount of uh, effort that they put in. They've got Rory McIlroy, Tiger Woods, Nelly Corda, Tommy Fleetwood, um, Scotty Scheffler. And now they've got the uh, QI-10, the QI-10 Max, QI-10 LS. You can experience your drives in 10K with the all-new QI-10 Series. 
uh, that stands for 10K MOI for maximum stability and forgiveness at impact. If you've seen the super slow-mo video that we saw of old drivers being hit off the toe and how much it destabilizes that driver face versus this new QI-10 and the, the face barely flinches when you hit it off the toe at impact. That is the difference with this thing. It's incredible. You can shop the QI-10 Max, QI-10, and QI-10 LS drivers, plus schedule a custom fitting at TaylorMadeGolf.com. That is TaylorMadeGolf.com. The days of missing the fairway are numbered. We love the QI-10, fellas. It's just, it's it's Amazing. a game changer. It's changed my game dramatically. I love the thing. Uh, all right. Brett says, uh, if you leave yourself with enough time to practice, and we'll throw this to Dan Rappaport first because he's been practice practicing, how do you break down pre-round practice time? Do you hit more drivers, fewer irons? Do you do short game, any short game? Do you putt? Do you chip? How should somebody break down their time before a round of golf? Dan just stretches the whole time, but if you're actually gearing up. <laughs> yeah, uh, arrive 90 minutes uh, before the tee time, stretch <laughs> for about 14. Uh, no, I, I just like I just followed most of the pros because I remember I one time I caddy for Fitz and I was like very when I, so when I, I saw it up close, putt meet on the putting green, putt a little bit just to get the speed of the greens, just to get the feel, then up through the bag, then some chips and some bunker shots. I always like to hit a bunker shot or two just to see how the sand is, and then back to the putting green and to the first tee. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Love, I mean, we're fucking horrible, but I do love um, starting with a wedge. Makes me feel like Tiger Woods. Yeah, I mean, after putting, like when you're on the range and you're just talking to people and you just like knock a ball out of the little bag and you just like nip one, and you're just like. Oh yeah, what, what's what? What's, what's huh? going on? Hmm? <laughs> You're all week. Yeah. Hmm? Where are you staying? But there's You're just here. like some guys will go up there and just like rip a driver. It's like Tiger doesn't do that, and I'm yeah. just not going to do that. You just got to copy wedges. the pros. You got to copy the pros. Copy Tiger Woods. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, that's my answer too. I really don't know. I just do exactly what Tiger Woods has done as best I could, which is hit like a 56 degree for a couple. You probably chunk one, you blade one, then you hit a couple good, and you're like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, I got that. And then hit like a mid iron and then hit a, a driver, a million drivers, and then go hit one out of bounds <laughs> on the first tee. That's typically my go. I mean, the routine. real the real answer, everyone has their own answer, but, but Dr. Brett McCabe had a really good um, segment in one of our Fixing Frankies. I think it was the very first one where he was saying you have to practice with a purpose and warm up with a purpose, but your first couple of swings, just like get those are getting loose swings. And you should learn nothing from them. I like and you that. shouldn't even care about where the ball goes. Step into it. Do like a step routine. Do whatever you got to do. You twist your back more than you usually do. Move your arms around. Like do whatever you got to do to just get loose. Like have a conversation with the guy next to you and just like skull a couple if you have to. Like swing. Just swing. And then unzip your, unzip your fucking glove. Take a step back and think about your process going forward. And now step into your, your process practice with a purpose is his biggest thing your next shot should be where is this thing going where do i want to hit it how do i want it to feel where do i want it to land that's when you really dial in getting ready for a round i, I think if you do too much of one or the other it's not going to work you have it has to be a perfect blend of like getting loose and then practicing with a purpose it's very difficult to hit those first couple swings without caring a lot about how they go I know. Because you think about your swing so much. You think about it the night before. You get out there. You have no idea how anything's going to go. Take that first swing. And if it's not like pretty pure and flush, you start to panic and try to change things. So I'm positive that is the right approach. But boy, it can be difficult to do that. So uh, hopefully Brett got something out of this. Um, Nate says, hey, dudes, I'm curious if the PGA Tour has any kind of rules against showing tattoos. I, knew, I noticed this new Pavon guy has a pretty sweet one on his hand. I can't think of almost anyone else with a big tattoo on tour that I know of. Um, please keep up the great work. Look forward to the pod every week. Ricky? Ricky has tattoos. There's no rule against it. Jake Knapp, our guy who's having our a really guy. good year, is like yadded all across his chest. And I keep on telling him that he needs to go double sleeve and be the first golfer who has double sleeves. Um, yeah, it's not a rule. I just got another tattoo, by the way. I've got six on my right arm You've now. You're getting so a lot. We're getting wow. there. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in a, in, a, in a... No, there's no rule against it. And I do think that Jake Knapp should go double sleeve. I think with, the, with his surfer vibe and his hair and his vape sponsorship that he has on his thing, I think double yeah. sleeve would really Who's fit. had the most prominent tattoo in golf i guess it's probably ricky's olympic rings yeah he's got the olympic one he's got like a few other ones that are super super small but i can't remember a guy who has like a sleeve but pavone has a pretty prominent one do you see machine gun kelly's new tattoos yeah <laughs> how is that okay how is he allowed to do what's that wrong with, what's wrong with that guy that's crazy just half his body in all black ink is that what it was yeah like his torso up they were saying you they got to put you out for that like if you you can't just sit there and have them do it. They got to put you under, and then it's just tons of needles 
giving you a tattoo like that. Apparently, there's oh. a, a group that specializes in it, which is psychotic. Yeah, that should God. be licensed. Or that's whatever. a mental. That's yeah, that's some sort of mental illness or something. I mean, you can't. It's just like you can't do that. Your whole body is in ink. It's just like not. That's it's not, not good. Normal. But I, uh, I think pro golfers should get more, uh, more tattoos. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah we really don't see a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Ricky's- this new this this new version of the golf like you know these like I mean they're not like I don't know. Like the good good guys are like cool guys with like high joggers. Maybe they'll get a couple tats and like I could see them Bubby's got you know, some tattoos. See- Bubby's like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this new version yeah. is next like iteration of the golfer that's like growing up with yeah. the YouTube golf and like the the bladed collars and all this like it's just a new version you might just start seeing cooler dudes it's not the fucking big baggy pant phil mickelson's with the visor anymore yeah if us if us dorks came out with tattoos we'd be like creed bratton coming in with like the new hair trying to look yeah. like, so i don't think that's really our no. thing but at least dan's dan's holding it up with a couple uh tattoos um can i submit my own question for from the gallery because i tweeted about this yesterday and it got a ton of action uh frankie um, from long island uh has a question <laughs> Hey guys, uh, Frank from Long Island here. Where's Dave at? And uh, <laughs> what's your favorite pizza place? <laughs> I got a great um, pizza spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys got to come here. It's in, it's in, you know, whatever Antarctica. Bay. <laughs> um, so I tweeted, and I, we've talked about this at, at one point on the podcast, but it just got me thinking because I want to do this for a video series. Is how how many strokes can you shave off realistically? Or so I'm I'm right now. My scoring average last year was an 83, and I said as an as a scoring average 83 golfer, regardless of whatever handicap, it's like a five. What am I realistically supposed to shoot from the front forward tees? What's the number that like if I come into the clubhouse and Dan from Colonial Springs says, "Would you shoot?" The number that he would expect to hear back when I said I played the Reds. My first and, instinct was par, but because that's because you, you got you shredded played- for that. Yeah, but then the stats guy came in and said 20% of the time you would break par. So that would be like right. a good round. I, I think you, first of all, you play hard courses. So 83 is not that indicative of like most people. I think if you went up, because you're playing courses that are like, what, 6,600 yards, 6,700 yards that are, that are yeah. tight and that have rough. I think you would shoot around par because I think you would feast on the par fives and you'd have wedges into all the par threes. What kind of yardage are we talking so I looked at like if I played the Pine Valley split at Colonial Springs, which is the hardest one that they've got. Yeah, it's a very difficult golf course. If you play from the goals, which sometimes we mess around with, it's a seventy-four point five rating, one forty-four slope. I mean, seven thousand yards. Hard. That's a very hard golf course. When we play from the very. blues, which is our we play from the blues all the time, but like we'll sometimes go back to the gold. The blue is sixty-six hundred, seventy-two point seven rating, one forty-one slope. Really, really hard, hard golf course. Yeah. So. You go to the Reds on that split. It's a 70.9 rating, 130 slope, 5,200 yards. Okay. You're looking at opening up with a 300-yard par 4, 289 par 4, 114 par 3. Then you get to the par 5s, 418. Like, those first four holes, you should be able to feast on them, right? Yes. Like, I understand that. it. I, I read a lot of the feedback, and I talked to a lot of, a lot of the guys. The Islanders are reaching out to me. They're like, I, you wouldn't fucking br- – you wouldn't – the number wouldn't even change because your short game sucks. I get that depending on what your strengths are in your game, that's going to tell you if it would help you or not. Because they're saying, like, if you if you play on a 295-yard par 4, instead of hitting that 8-iron into the green when it was, like, a 381, you're now hitting, like, a little flighted, like, 52-degree into the green from, like, 42 yards away. Is that your strength? Are you actually getting close to proximity to the hole with that swing as opposed to just a nice smooth 8 or a 9-iron? And I really don't know. I, I, wa- I can't wait to try it out. I yeah. want to. But I, I, it was interesting to see so many people fall on. Like Joel Damon said, I would struggle to break 80, depending on the course. And Dan said that I would break par if I had a good round. It's gotta like, do it. There's really, right, you got to do it. <clears throat> my, my thinking was like, if your, average, if your scoring average is 83, I thought, you know, you'd be around like the first couple, the first time or a couple times that you do it, I think you'd be around six or seven shots better. Or something like that. And so I was like, okay, he's going to be around mid-high 70, 76, 77, 78, something like that. Now, I think like the handicap system, you could definitely go out there a few times out of if you did it 10 times. I think you'll break par, shoot par. I think you might also shoot 82 or 83 a couple times. But I think in general, you would shoot four or five over. I think it would definitely be easier. 
and I've seen you shoot on these videos, especially breaking nineties, like 75, 76 from your, you know, more longer tees with Trent and all that shit. But I do think, like, I think that you still have to play golf. You're still going to hit some bad drives. Yes. You're still going to hit some three putts. You're still going to have 62 yards into a green and miss it where you would have right. also missed it with a seven iron. So that's just like going to happen. Uh, maybe I think you're, you're better the than same you are. Fucking, then you're just in the same spot that you were. Where it's like, okay. I mean, I had you know, a pretty so damn I, good year no, last year. That's I mean, what I'm saying. I, I see you play and you're when good. We, when so we play when we fucking dude. Aaron Hills. When we played at uh, Dominican Republic, I shot like a 35 on that nine holes against Riggs and Francis. Right. So it's like that was for a, that was a tough golf course. Bro, so I'm just thinking really if I hard. if I knock off a couple thousand yards off that place, like, <laughs> yeah, hopefully you're come better. On. <laughs> well, the thing but is, I, is like your but, the guy the Islanders are maybe making fun of your short game, but your short game is good now. And if your yeah. if your driver is on, dude, if you can hit like 280 into these par fours that are like 305, I think you're gonna be. I think you're going to be closer to par than these people are saying. Way closer. I, I, I agree. I, I think it's just um, the issue with golf is it's, 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 it's so much harder to go a lot lower than you usually do, and it's so easy to go a lot higher than you usually do, right? And it's like when you don't – like there's a reason your scoring average is 83. I've seen you shoot mid-high right. 70s a lot, so those other rounds must have been fucking pretty high, and it's like those right. – those come in, those can just kind of happen, and it's not like you're playing horrific, but it's like, dude, it's just hard to get the fucking ball in the hole. It's like so hard to get it in the hole. And so I do think you would, if you do this, which is a fantastic idea, if you do this like 10 rounds, I think you're going to break par a few times, but I think you're going to average around like 77 or something like that would kind of be my Yeah, it's nerve-wracking because you still got and, – and I know like Bryson says that every pro should play from like the Reds or every aspiring pro should play from the Reds and try and like break 60 and like feel what it's like <laughs> to go for the course record and go for like the lowest score possible because you start to feel – I got a lot of DMs from from country club pros being like, this is what I love to teach my my students because they finally feel what it's like to putt and play like three under and like can I you? I did it right. I did it last year. I shot eight under. It was a lot of fun. Right, it's eight under. Yeah, but I played the golf course every single day. But it was like par fives. You'll have you'll have a, a lob wedge in some of them. Right. Not a lob wedge, but you'll have like a pitching wedge. You know, like a you're gonna you you should play the par fives at least four under. I definitely want to do it at Colonial. I mean, people want to see this, and I, and it's pretty relevant. So maybe I'll try it in Myrtle Beach. I'm a little bit nervous about playing like a course for the first time and playing from the Reds. It's like now you're just playing like an executive course, and you might just like shit it, like you know, just play bad. Right. Like I didn't play that great at the Desert Open, and that was like the all par threes and like a <laughs> 300 yard par four, and like yeah. it's like, dude, I've shot. I mean, I've shot like five over on the cradle before. You know, it's like right. I play it yeah. fucking a million times and every hole's 70 yeah, yeah, yeah. yards, but it's like you're so, just spinning them off. You can't get up and down. Like, it's not that hard. To Colonial, do. I know so well. And I play, like, dude, if I played the forward tees at Rockville Lynx, where oh. I shot a 75 two times in a row from 60, 300 yards, whatever we play it at, I know I could go low there. You might like, shoot I just know that place. I, I just know that place like the back of my hand, like the way that Luke has it. Like, those greens are so hard, but like hitting little wedges into them so that they don't fly off those turtle back backs and all that yeah. would be so much better. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd be fun. I'd let, I want Trent to join me on it, but I, then he'd just like, he'd shoot like an 82 and everyone would be like, well, it's not a real break in 90, <laughs> but like, it'd be fun to do it. I'll come out there with camera you. I'll, I to mean, teach you like how to play under pressure and like that 18th hole of colonial when you were about to break 90 it might not be as hard oh. you know i'll I mean? come out there and do it with you maybe i always just like i sprint to my car on the 16th hole and i just never finish yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that you do like the uh you like bring out your uh, little niece or something to hit your putt on the last yeah. hole like they do during the part three contest of the masters or i'll take um, a gimme on the first hole and then it's be like oh it's not gonna work yeah. yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's a fun, it's a fun um, idea. I've never really thought about trying to do that because it always felt like it's not a real round of golf. But the more you like, why does it matter where you start? We like, don't play that tees, many real rounds of golf anymore. We do such right, weird shit. He's also just like, don't you're just playing a different style of the course. It's still golf. It's yeah. still it's just, very all much this shit golf. is just like experiments. It's all little experiments. Can I break 90? You know, we're doing four man scrambles like we just want to do different shit. Playing from the front tees is just different shit. I want to I want to be out there when you do it. I think it'd be really fun. It's a great idea. And then after, you know, if you break par from those, you go back like one tee box and just see like, right. what can you do? And then who knows? Eventually you'll be on the back tees trying to break par. It'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. Imagine. 
Just keep dropping <laughs> strokes. <laughs> One of my favorite, most utilitarian apps mm. I've ever had on my phone is our great friends, Rocket Money. If you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account, you have no idea where it's going, well, I know it is all those subscriptions, and I know that because of Rocket Money. You could just feel when your account is loosey-goosey. You just know that you could be doing a better job. But you don't really know where to start. You're not going to sit there and comb through every statement. You have a life to live. You got golf to watch or play. You got YouTube golf to watch, whatever it might be. You just don't have time to comb through all that. Rocket Money, that's who does it. It is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower bills. This app is phenomenal. Incredible. Truly incredible because you're not going to know. You don't have the brain, you don't have the brain power or or you know the bandwidth to be able to figure out and pay attention to all these things you've got. You got Maybe your wife, your significant other, whatever, they're ordering things, they're clicking things on TVs, they're hitting yes, free trial. You know, I want to sign up for this, I want to sign up for that. And then all of a sudden at the end of the month, you're like, what am I even subscribed to? In this in this world where everything's combining too, you used to have a Hulu subscription, now you got a Netflix subscription, and now they're combined, and you got MLB network and NHL, and now they're com- it's like you don't even know what you've got anymore. This tells you. It tells you, like, hey, you're like, you got nine different streaming platforms for the same thing. Can we cancel it? Uh, Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of 720 bucks a year with over $500 million in canceled, sub- canceled subscriptions alone. So stop wasting money on things you do not use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash four. That's rocketmoney.com slash four. Rocketmoney.com slash four. All right. I think for me, that's pretty much all that I had. Um, I did want to give a, a shout out to Donnie Does, who it appears dude helped save uh, a, a airplane from that's going fun. down. What? Nuts, I, man. I, I don't. It was. You didn't see this, Trent? No. Dude, Donnie had to like tackle a fucking guy trying to open up the emergency door on a flight from Albuquerque. How would I have possibly missed that? I don't know. What it. Yeah, at first, I mean, it's Donnie, so I was a little bit skeptical. But, it, you know, he was doing, like, news interviews with his wife last night, and it sounds like he was – he put it in a very funny way. But he's like – he was in, like, a Panda Express tequila-induced uh, stupor, and next thing he knew, a guy a handful of rows behind him was aggressively trying to rip open the emergency exit door on a flight, which could not be good. And he and like a couple other guys tackled him, restrained him, and they ended up like handcuffing the guy to a fucking seat. Duct taped his and legs. Then, oh, and then they turned oh. the plane around, re, you know, landed in Albuquerque, and the guy got taken out by authorities. Holy shit. Yeah, his tweet did 22 nuts. million views. People are fucking insane. He's got 76,000 likes. He saved the whole airplane. Now we're, now we're, and we're saying, so oh, bad wow, we got a lot of way. likes. He saved lives, Trent. It's not about likes. It's all everything's about likes, Danny Rap. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, I'm learning that. I'm learning that. Um, that's incredible. <laughs> Shout out to the wonton Don. That's incredible, man. Wow. That guy's lived How quite the life. He's like in he's he's like climbing Mount Mount Everest and Dude, he, just he sneaky got I think it's the tunnels under New York City on YouTube that has twenty two million views. Dude, John Jesus. Kelly, when we were in, uh, John Kelly travels with him a lot, right? Oh, so yeah. when we were in, when we were in Aaron Hills, he was telling me about fucking being in Afghanistan <laughs> and getting stopped by the Taliban. And I'm like, we're making a golf video out here. So Wonton is Don a is a wild, less boy. stressful he's, situation for you. We're trying to shoot like, like 71 yeah. from the red team. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Sweet. <laughs> Shout out to uh, the Wonton Don. All right. I think that's all I got. If anybody has anything else. Um, otherwise, you know, great, great fun. We got a couple segments. We we don't get to segments all that often. So hopefully people. Wait, I got a, I got a breaking uh, news. I got a breaking news. I got a breaking news. Oh. Entering the 18 hole pre qualifier event for the 2024 Cognizant Classic in the Palm Beach, Charlie Woods. What? what? He's trying no to qualify Whoa. for a PGA Tour event. It's what? starting. Whoa! I thought you were gonna say Anthony Kim. I thought you were. No. Gonna, imagine no. if you had said w- with the last name of Woods, and we would have been like, "What?" And then it's. Charlie, wait a minute. This is the one that you're you're playing. No, in? no. This is the cognizant. This is the Honda. the Honda. 
No, oh, it's the, the Honda. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, this is the Honda. It's in it's it's in that area, but I I think this is his first time trying to qualify for a tour event. So let's see what happens. Wow. No way. No and way. And so it begins. And so it begins. How old is he? Is fifteen? Fifteen? Is he fifteen? Uh, I think he might be fourteen. He wow, is. Wow, he's just trying to get his reps in. That's fucking wild, he's, man. He's. <laughs> He just turned 15 on February 8th. That's that's 15 year old. That's something. Yeah. Sorry. I just had to say, that's great. Finished. Yeah. That's great. Thank God we got that in. Oh my goodness. How is he? I mean, I know we've debated this a bunch, but he's not like a killer talent at his level. He's good, right? But he's not killing people out there. I I don't think he's the best 15. I don't think he's the best 15 year old in the country, but I also think he doesn't play like all the events. And I think it might be by design. Yeah, like, it's well, kind the, of been a King King Richard situation where he's like hasn't really been out there tested against the best. Yeah. Like, will this be the first time there's like hardcore evidence of like what it actually is? What his yeah, game well, it's is? Fr- yeah, it's, it's hard to judge a guy based on playing against other 14 year olds in Florida. This is, you know, it's a pre qualifier, so it's not even like if he's got to win this to get to the Monday qualifier, which is how hard it is to qualify for these tournaments. Jesus. Um, Impossible. Yeah, it's, That's uh, not. You have to you have to win this to not qualify. win. I think it's probably like He's four got spots out of like fifty or oh, whatever. And yeah, if you, you get it. If you if you've done a certain amount of things in golf, you can skip the pre qualifier. Like if you've made a cut in a tour event or whatever. But like any Joe Schmo, there's usually a pre qualifier now before the Monday qualifier. I honestly don't know what I'm confident enough in life to do to be that confident to join a pre qualifier like that. Like how these guys show up and like <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna win this thing like. Like like a I'm, masturbation that makes you want to pre qualifier you wouldn't you would that makes like, yeah I mean maybe like EA like EASHL like if I had like to win four games out of five like all right maybe I can pull those off but like aside from that I don't know I, I that makes me want to puke sh- like fifty guys showing up and only four guys get through to the qualifier no way this is doing no why way is this it is, so hard no way this is televised right that's just that won't happen no no but I who knows maybe the Nate Edwardson type will will turn up. Maybe a little live stream action from the fellas yeah. down there. Go out there and yeah. get a tripod. And just Tiger would love that. Wow. Fuck, man. Wild shit. Let's go, Charlie. Yeah. Is Charlie going to finish a PJ Tour event this year before Tiger? <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> sad. He's only, he's only finished two events since the accident. Three years. Two events he's finished. Let's get he's that up, up there on DK Partner, you know? He's walked up the 18th hole twice. All right. I'm he's sorry. tomorrow. He just got sick, and It could have happened to anybody. Okay. Happened tomorrow noon did. eastern players merch tiger's gonna probably play in the event mm. we sold <laughs> this thing out within i think it was by like wednesday last year this you know the swinging gold man is just so iconic the fact that we got him on our merchandise it's better than it was last year we've got the hoodies the hats are gonna go the hats go so fast online that if you actually want a player's hat and you're listening to this and this thing goes out tomorrow just log on at 12 and just get your hat now yeah. like that's the thing this that on the inside with the cool. netting yep mm-hmm. so cool i love that Some netting too the netting's so comfortable there great such hats a, such a comfortable hat. great merch mm-hmm. it's just really good so tomorrow on our website um yeah it's exciting stuff players merchandise got polos with the six with the 17th green shout out to pft commenter he hit the green right yeah he did yeah i think so unless they were tricking us i can get tricked easily dude Me it's too. so weird yeah. seeing woods will tee off at 7 38 9 a.m eastern thursday oh they're gonna, and it's they're just, gonna and it's not they're gonna tight. go heavy on that and they're it's not go heavy on that. woods it's just oh, woods. put them at the top of the leaderboard he's like <laughs> yes yes mm-hmm. we need, i need tiger tracker to you know appear just out of nowhere and and make this happen call it woods tracker and woods track tracker yeah all right big thanks to our partners cars.com fireball rocket money and Taylor made golf the new QI10. Uh, fun show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching everything that we do. Go check this stuff out all over the uh, different platforms. If you haven't, be ready for the Players' Championship merch drop Friday at noon Eastern. We'll be back next week. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.